Alright, as we all, or well, a lot of you should know, this game was the result of some of the many demos to Resident Evil 4. One of the demos considered to be really, really fucking different to how Resident Evil actually played out. Which, you know, begs the question why Resident Evil 4 wasn't a, another series altogether, but I don't know. But that specific demo, they made into a, a series of its own. And that's Devil May Cry. Though, this game reeks of first tries. Oh boy, hopefully they didn't get the uh, formula down pat until the third game, because I've yet to play two, and I really do like the third game, so I'm, uh, I'm a little scared. But either way, let's see how DMC1 started off. This is my review of Devil May Cry. The story is about Dante running Double May Cry as he takes a job from Trish. And, well, she's introduced by driving her motorcycle into Dante's shop. Okay, uh, she never repays Dante for that, but either way, the job that she's offering is for Dante to take out the Dark Lord Mundus before he can break the seal and, well, enter the human world. And while well, Mundus is doing all this on an island. And that's basically it. Just like with the third game, I didn't pay attention at all to the story, but it's a little different. This isn't like an 80s action movie. It's just, This story's problem is that it's by the numbers, and that makes sense for the first game, because normally first games are going to be just a basic plot line a little more fleshed out. This is Dark Lord Rises, or at least trying to arise, and the good guy tried to take him out. That's literally... It doesn't do anything new with the plot, so yeah, again, just feels by the numbers. Oh, and also, uh, I would uh, do a character portion, but it'll be literally one second long. Trish is not needed at all in the story. Anyone else could have taken up the helm, because mainly, mainly I'm saying this is because she is one of the blandest characters I've ever seen. Yeah, remember when I said this feels like first try? Yeah, I wasn't kidding at all. This is mainly because of the boss fights. They are worse than DJ Octavio and Splatoon 1 and Nyx put together. During a live stream that I did on my Twitch channel, my friend Noah was in the chat, and he told me that the bosses were, like, just freaking bad. And I thought it was a small exaggeration, but god, I was so wrong. Let's start out with this main fucker that I think it almost everyone hates, Phantom. You fight this fucker like, I don't know, four times in the game, and he's a horrible boss. Thank god it only took me two tries in the first, third, and last fights. But the second fight was the worst in my opinion. The camera angle you get while he's chasing you is just horrible. And for me, just at least for me, I kept getting caught on these columns. Oh boy, that just sucked. Until I got the ability Air Raid, I thought I was never going to beat this game at all, because, again, this is one of the worst bosses I've ever fought. Though, again, with Air Raid, he just drops like fly, so buy it when you get enough red orbs. The only boss I thought was pretty easy to take out was Nelangelo. The only reason why I fell to this guy before, at least on the first fight, is because of all the fucking pot shots I took from Phantom. And... Phoenix. This fucker took a lot, too. It just, that's mainly because it felt like it took a long fucking time just to finish the boss fight. Outside of the bosses just being too difficult, the only thing I really don't like is that they're reused a lot. As I said, you fight Phantom four times, Nella Angelo, and the rest of the bosses a total of three times. And well, the reuse is fine. But it's lazy, mainly because nothing really changes at all except for more HP, more defense, and more attack. A good reuse of a boss changes the gameplay outside of, well, just giving them what I just stated. Take Vulcan Raven for example. In his first boss fight, he's riding in a tank with two grunts and you gotta chuck grenades into the tank to, well, take him out. 
father the second time changes it up completely, giving him a Gatling gun and you gotta sneak around to actually deal damage to him. And now uh, I'm not saying you gotta change it up completely, but give something else than a different stadium. And it's just, it's just the same song and dance, but you know what? In terms of final bosses, I think I found a worse one than Nyx. Mundus is just a horrible final boss. This is the first review of a game that I've never played before that I recorded my gameplay from a blind playthrough. I stopped recording my attempts around the, the fifth attempt at Mundus. Oh lord. I can't beat this boss at all. First, it starts with the Star Fox section, and I don't think I'll be able to beat the first Star Fox game because there is no crosshairs. It really makes it hard to hit these orbs to break Mundus' shield. But as soon as you do break his shield, you can just belt him with uh, Devil Trigger symbols. Now, this is hard enough because, again, the orbs are a little hard to hit because they're really small, and you got inverted controls for flying. Ugh, I had enough of the running controls for swimming. But, unless you're controlling a plane, you don't need inverted controls for flying segments like this. Ugh, but then again, more on the inverted controls later. I am not done complaining about that. Second phase is just a slog, where the only way to hit Mundus is being in the Devil Trigger state. So yeah, fuck this section majorly. I still don't know who's worse though, N Nyx or Mundus. I think Mundus is worse, but at least with Nyx, every single attempt that I died at, I at least got closer and closer and closer to defeating Nyx. And the only times I fall is when Nyx decides to use Night Queen. <sighs> I almost got on the Persona tangent again. <laughs> but let's get back onto these on to add in this game. Regular enemies are no problem at all. The only enemy that actually puts up a decent challenge are the shadows. They're not the true self, but these weird dog things. You just have to shoot them until the weakness is revealed and then just slash at them until the thing dies. It's a great enemy to fight because it forces you to think fast on your feet, to dodge its attacks, and get the weakness shot. They're not as difficult as Phantom or as weak as Marionettes. They had a good balance. Though the only thing I really fucking hate is that during a battle or recovery animation, you cannot pause a game to swap weapons or use an item. In some of the footage I'm showing you, well, it's not obvious, but I'm hitting start. But it's not pausing because I can't pause it because Dante's either in a fighting animation or a recovery animation. Ugh. The fighting itself is a little slow. The main it's mainly the reason why I don't like boss fights in this game. The boss will get 10 shots on you before you can even move one step closer to attack. Though everything does not match up to how I can't stand underwater sections. I wouldn't mind these if, if the controls weren't so horrible. There's still combat while underwater, but it really sucks because the only weapon you can use underwater is the needle gun. In fact, needle gun, that's useless outside of the water. But either way, it's not a good weapon no matter what. In fact, it really fucking sucks. But then again, there isn't a lot of underwater sections in this game, so I'm at least grateful for that. But it still sucks. Another thing that really sucks is platforming. But that's only because I don't like the camera angles shown in some areas. One of the biggest examples I can give is this one secret mission where you have to jump on these skull enemies. Sorry, I'm forgetting their names. And the angles you get is so horrible and the skulls are way too small to actually land on. Ugh, that's one blue orb fragment I am not getting. For the PS2, the graphics are just okay. The one thing I, that really gets to me is all the dead space when you pause the game in the HD collection. You still get dead space in the third game, and I would imagine as well for the second game, but it, it just gets to me, to be perfectly honest. I don't know why I really hate dead space, I just think it's visually boring. That's mainly why I added a background to my reviews. But then again, they can't really do a damn thing about it, because for some reason, the pot screens are FMVs. And speaking of FMVs, thank god the FMV cutscenes aren't as pixelated as they are in the third game with the HE collection. I mean, just look at this cutscene in 3. Could they add any more pixels? The in-game cutscenes to draw all just alright and looks bland. They could have used a little more colors to make things a little more pleasing to the eyes, but then again, at least it's not, it's not like Resident Evil 4 where it just 
Yeah. Ugh, that just looks really fucking bland. Music-wise, there's only one song I really don't like, and that's a song that starts out with sirens in the background. It just doesn't get me ready for the fights at all in this game, and it just sounds like something that Sour Cream would rave to. I can totally rave to this. So now, taking account of story, gameplay, graphics, and sound, Devil May Cry gets a 1 out of 10. Yeah, boss fights are mainly the reason why the rating is so low. This game, as I said at the start, really feels like first try. The bosses are really just worse, except for the first fight with Nella Angelo, but either way they're not designed well. I wouldn't mind if they reused bosses, but only if they have just changed it up a little bit. But again, it's just literally the same song and dance to every single fight, and it just blends into each other. The worst boss I can think of is Nightmare. It's horrible, and I do think I found a worse boss, well, final boss, than Nyx. The only reason to come back to this game is just to see how the series started out. At this point in time, Devil May Cry is available on the PlayStation 2 and on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 via the Devil May Cry HD Collection.